Hey friends, my name is Kat. Welcome to my channel, Boss Babe DIY. If you're just joining me today, today is the final video in a four part series I've been doing about how I transformed a friend's guest room into a full vintage lover's walk-in closet. If you haven't watched the first three videos, I will link them down in the description box below. Now, just to give you a recap on what we finished last video, we've gone into the room, cleared out everything, painted all of our walls, hung up wallpaper, installed a French door, hung up some exposed shelving, put some shelving into a small closet, and on top of that, I completely made over two thrifted dressers. So it sounds like a lot, but there's still a good bit more to do to get this room finished up. So without further ado, let's jump right on in. One of the big things we're trying to accomplish in this closet room for Desiree and her husband, David, is just space for things. There's so much stuff in there and they just needed it organized. Um, and I wanted to make sure there was a space for her stuff and a space for his stuff. I know that he's felt a little overwhelmed with all the vintage clothes um, hanging in there with, you know, Desiree's amazing store. So um, he's also got a lot of like magazines and books and things. So I wanted to try to incorporate a small space for that. Um, you know, I don't know if it'll fit everything, but at least gives him a dedicated space for that. So I found this small bookshelf on Facebook Marketplace for $20, super cheap. Um, and I'm actually going to do the reverse of what I normally do. Let me show you. So normally you see me taking a piece of furniture, whether it be wood or laminate and painting over it. In this case, I'm going to do the opposite because um, this black just doesn't really go with the aesthetic they've got. And I was gonna paint it white, but I, you know, I, I wanted a little bit more natural look since we've got some natural wood going on in the room. So I took a piece of 120 grit sandpaper and just hand sanded a little bit. And you can see it's been painted twice, uh, black and then green, but it's over solid wood and that wood color is so beautiful. I'm just gonna sand this paint back. It should be, fairly easy she says now um yeah so that that should be pretty easy on this guy and give david a nice little bookshelf under the window to store all of his magazines and books and then we'll we'll decorate this with some plant life i removed all of the paint with my palm sander starting with an 80 grit and working my way up to 120. I decided to stain this, that same gel stain that I used on my waterfall dresser. If you watch that video, I've got that linked up above. What I like about this stain is since it's a gel stain, it sits on top of the wood instead of soaking into it like an oil-based stain would, but it still shows the wood grain really nicely. Can we talk about this color? Y'all, look at this. Look how pretty this is. Look at this. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. God, Ugh. it's so gorgeous. I love the way this turned out. I love the variations in the wood. I think it's so great. You can tell that it was handmade. I don't care that it's a little splotchy. I think it adds to it a lot. Um, I did want to try to match this stain color to the vanity that I got, which is, oh, right here. And I think it's pretty close. It's a little hard to tell with the lighting, but you can, as a backup, you can kind of see the like mahogany color coming out. So uh, I think this is going to be great. I'm just going to seal this up with some polyurethane and call it done. To seal this piece, I'm using General Finish's High Performance Polyurethane in Flat. You guys have probably seen me use this before. I really like how flat this dries down and I like how tough the top coat is once it's all cured. I'm just using a couple of cheap sponge brushes to apply this. You can get these at any box hardware store or craft store. So I said this in a previous video, but the one thing you'll need to look out for when you're doing a water-based polyurethane top coat like this is these tiny bubbles that form. That's why you want to keep it really thin. But you know, if you just squeeze it into that corner, you see all those tiny little bubbles there. You just need to make sure that you smooth those out because those bubbles will show up at the end. But all you have to do is smooth it out, do a nice thin coat, and you'll never even know they were there. 
I ended up applying three full coats of this polyurethane. Okay, now that that bookshelf is done, let's jump back into our actual room. Now, if you recall, this room had no overhead lighting whatsoever, just a pretty sad looking little fan. So I wanted to give Desiree and David something that was obviously bright enough for their whole room, but also something that fit this beautiful aesthetic we were going for. And I found the perfect chandelier on Facebook Marketplace for $30. So Ashley and I tried our hand at switching it out. Now, if you're looking to update your room at home, this is a really good way to do so. Just changing out a lighting fixture can completely change the feel of a room. But remember, if you're doing this, you wanna make sure that your breaker is off, your light switch is off, and there's absolutely no power running in those wires where you're switching out your light fixture. Always, always, always safety first. Okay, all right. All right, ground first. Holding it in place. Look for the lipstick. So, yes. <laughs> I test it like that wouldn't <laughs> blow you off. Yes. Splatter. <laughs> God. <laughs> I'm gonna use my boobs to help yeah, hold it. Yeah. Nature <laughs> shelf. Nature shelf to help hold this up. Nature shelf. <laughs> Up under, yeah, up the under there. That way we don't yeah. hit anything. Yeah. Let's see. Feels like, uh, can you rotate it like one whole way around? Oh, other, other way. way. Other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like we're getting caught. I see what you're saying. We're caught up on the chain thing. Yeah. I'm not going fast enough. I think I I have a smaller radius than you do. True. Yeah. It's a long boat. <laughs> I just wanted to feel like we did it. Oh my gosh, look at this cable. <laughs> Ridiculous. It's okay. It's fine. You'll never see it. Nope. Hopefully that's high enough. back to the drawing board. We turn off the power and unscrewed the cap, and it turns out it was thankfully just a loose connection. A couple of our wires weren't completely twisted around each other underneath that cap, so we tightened them up, twisted the cap back on, installed it again, and turned the power back on. about this lamp. It's amazing. I found it at an estate sale of uh, a, a person who was obviously an avid collector of things, uh, one of them being cardinals. This person had tons and tons of cardinal things as well as some like wonderful Betty Boop and Marilyn Monroe tchotchkes. Um, I am obsessed with it. This is one of the first things I found and Desiree was like, yes, yes, absolutely. They came as a pair. It's got this amazing bronze base and all of this beautiful coral fringe and I love it so much. The next big project I had to tackle in this room was fixing up this French door. Now I mentioned in my first video this was originally an exterior door so you see it's got this extra hole for a deadbolt but we don't really need it because there's no reason to deadbolt this closet room. So I'm going to be filling in this gap and then smoothing over it so that it basically disappears once it's all painted. To do that, I'll be using great stuff. If you've never used great stuff before, it's typically used in gaps around window frames. You basically apply it and let it sit for a while and it expands like crazy and fills in any holes or gaps you have in between your materials. 
see, this is what I mean by it expands like crazy. I left this for about an hour and came back to this. So what I'm doing here is just trimming away some of the excess so that I can go over this with some wood filler. I will say that I didn't let this sit as long as I should have. You can see in the middle it's still a little bit gooey. So leave it for a couple hours if you can. But you know, I made a new friend in the process. To fill in these gaps, I'm using Bondo wood filler. This is a two-part wood filler, so you start with your base, and then there's a cream hardener that you add just a little bit to, and you mix it all together, which activates the actual wood filler. Once you've got it all mixed and it's activated, you've got maybe five minutes, seven minutes tops to work with it before it just all hardens down. So I'm spreading it over the holes that were left from my great stuff it looks like peanut butter going on but it dries down super super hard and the idea is to smooth this all out so you never see it under the paint now i used quite a bit of bondo because i really wanted to cover over this hole so i did a combination of kind of chipping away at the edges and then sanding down everything else nice and smooth. I started with a 60 to just really rip through this Bondo and then went down to a 120 and then a 220 grit. Once that hole was filled, it was time to paint. I took on the long, arduous task of taping off every single one of these windows inside and out just to get a nice crisp line. I'm glad I did, but it took a long time. I'm using a couple of my zebra brushes to paint on this door. I'm using that same kind of peachy white that I used on the closet and our shoe boxes. And after a couple coats of paint, it's like that deadbolt hole never even existed. Next, I'm moving on to installing the open copper pipes that will house Desiree's skirts and shirts and any shorter pieces of clothing. I broke out my handy new laser level and my stud finder to figure out exactly where I needed to place each of the flanges that would act as the base for these bars. These are half inch copper pipes and connectors that I'm using for each of these bars. All right, time out. So I ran into a couple of problems here. So the first problem I ran into is that I somehow lost the footage for the rest of this copper pipe install. So I'm not sure where it went. It is somewhere out in the ether, uh, never to be seen again. The second problem I ran into and the bigger problem is that this copper pipe system actually failed me. Um, I got everything installed and we tested clothes on and it seemed to be doing pretty well, but I got a message from Desiree about a month later that said, emergency, it all fell down. And of course I was absolutely mortified, but I took it as a learning moment and I decided to pivot and try a different material. I ended up going back and buying black steel pipe that all screwed in together really tightly. I scrubbed all the grease off of it and then I spray painted it that same copper kind of rose gold color to give that same effect. So just know that happens sometimes guys in DIYs. You don't always see it on Instagram or YouTube, but sometimes things don't work the way you think they're going to. So I chose to take it as a learning moment and I hope you guys do too.
I'm gonna make some simple shoe boxes, I guess is what you call them, uh, out of this plywood, this pine plywood that I got cut down. The other side is uh, really nice and even, no knots in it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Fun fact, uh, if you go to Home Depot and buy a sheet of plywood, and that sheet of plywood won't fit into your car, like me, you can have them cut it down. Uh, they won't cut down to anything less than 12 inches. The guy was really nice today and shaved off just a hair for blade width so I could get four even pieces out of the plywood. Um, but yeah, so it's just cheaper than buying one by 12. And uh, yeah. Now you would typically want to break out a cirque saw or a sliding miter saw to cut down these 12 inch pieces, but this is what I had on hand and I was kind of feeling lazy, so I just cut halfway through and then turned it over and cut the rest of the way through since these don't have to be terribly accurate. I also set up this stop block when I was cutting my shorter pieces. This just ensures that I get the same size piece every time. To connect these pieces, I'm going to be using pocket holes. If you have not seen me use this before, this is my Craig pocket hole jig and it is honestly one of my favorite tools that I own. It just makes connecting these pieces of furniture where it doesn't matter if you have these holes underneath. It just, it makes it so much easier. So if you have the means, I would suggest investing in one because it comes in so handy. Once I had my boxes constructed, I primed them and painted with that same peachy white. As a last minute addition, I constructed some additional shelves to go in the corner of this closet room. This would house all of Desiree's adorable purses and these cute little scarves she already had in these small baskets. These shelves were built basically the same way as the shoe boxes, just upright and with additional shelves. Moving back over to our palm wall, I had originally intended to leave this closet open to display all of David's shoes and their beautiful winter coats, but as we all know, things don't always stay organized. So I found this beautiful green velvet curtain on Facebook Marketplace for $20 and I decided to swag it just to the side of the closet. That way you can see their beautiful clothes on display, but they can cover it up if ever they need to just throw something in their last minute. That way it's still functional, but it's also very much a part of the room. And of course, a closet wouldn't be complete without some jewelry storage. I found these two beautiful gold frames at that same estate sale as my cardinal lamps. And what I'm doing is just removing the glass that's in them and replacing it with some wire screen. I stapled it to the back and voila, Desiree now has a very attractive way to display all of her earrings. The last thing I'm doing to finish up this room is attach a piece of quarter round to cover up that gap that I left at the top of my wallpaper wall. I'm adding a few final touches and this room is complete. Before the renovation, this room felt like chaos, madness, 
now this room feels so organized and beautiful and it really is a reflection of me and my personality. It is truly a mix-up of some of my favorite things. Um, I was heavily inspired by Blanche's room in The Golden Girls, um, especially with the wallpaper and some nods to the 80s. And then I also was really inspired by um, Hollywood boudoir, uh, very lush and lavish uh, velvets and um, just lush colors and I'm also very inspired by sustainability and reusing things and bringing them back to life which is what Kat really did so beautifully. She took old pieces in order to really utilize secondhand materials and make them completely come back to life. I think that it's so inspiring that to know that we don't need to buy new things, that we can really repurpose and use things that were once beautiful and maybe just need to be freshened up or given a new life. And how beautiful is that to be able to use these wonderful materials um, and uh, reuse and recycle and just, you know, give something a second chance. And my husband has his stuff neatly organized as well. And I know that he's really excited about it too. He was even more excited about the transformation than I thought he would be. So that was really exciting. My favorite part of the room is maybe the wallpaper edition. It just brings a whole different vibe to the room and um, I also just really enjoy being able to see everything neatly organized. That was probably the biggest thing that I needed practically and it has made life so much easier to see my own personal collection of vintage clothes organized in a way that makes me be able to use the clothes more and really appreciate the collection. I think I was most surprised by all the work that went into making the closet room what it is. Kat was just amazing to work with and really patient and she was completely invested in it. I really appreciate all the thought to the small details and finding the things that would work with my personality and my style. The best reaction to the transformation of the closet room is friends' reactions when they come and they see see it and knew what it looks like before um, and how it's just completely transformed into something different, not only functional, but really beautiful. And I think a lot of people have been really inspired now to do their own versions of closet rooms. Working with Kat was incredible and I am, have been recommending Kat to everybody um, because I'm just so in love with my closet room. I spent a lot of time in there and now I think to myself, wait, can the rest of my house feel like the closet room? So I do have plans to uh, hit her up in the future um, for more projects because if we can make one room feel this amazing. I know that she can make all the rooms feel this amazing. It's just been such an amazing thing to see how she works and she's really a, ma a magician. Um, that's the best way that I can describe her talent is um, she just, she has an eye and she has the skills and it's pretty incredible actually to see her work and to see her uh, utilize her creativity and her her strength and skills in carpentry and um, making things um, basically out of nothing it feels like she is an incredible talent and I would recommend her to anybody thanks so much for sticking with me through this closet renovation journey guys 
It was by far the biggest project I've ever undertaken, but I had such a blast doing it. If you aren't already, go ahead and subscribe because I've got a whole lot more coming your way very soon. So until then, I'll see you next project.